Hey everyone, Steve here once again to give you a video on the final hardware updates to my Hackintosh. The final upgrades I made are towards the processor, memory, and the SSD to my Windows drive. The reason I say final is I don't plan on making any significant changes to my current build for the foreseeable future, with the exception of swapping out hard drives once in a while. The next time I plan on making a big hardware change, it will most likely be on a new PC and hopefully OS X compatible. With that out of the way, let's get started with the hardware unboxings. Starting with the processor, I chose an Intel Core i7-4790, not the unlocked version. Unfortunately, my motherboard only supports 4th gen Haswell processors, and this is the second best processor that was approved to run on this board. Included in the box besides the processor is a CPU fan with pre-applied thermal paste and product literature. For memory, I went back to Corsair for the Vengeance 16GB memory kit. Not much of a difference between the previous RAM, besides the increase in size, and the blue heat spreaders which were cheaper than black. The main reason I went with 16 over 8 is because I wanted to get back into running virtual machines again and want to make sure I have enough memory to dedicate to multiple OS's. For my last upgrade, I chose a Samsung Evo 250GB SSD for my Windows boot drive. This will be used to store the OS, programs, and frequently used files with everything else going onto a standard 7200RPM hard drive. Included with the drive is product literature and file transfer software. Up next is the pre-installation process. Before I got to placing new hardware in my PC, I first made sure to back up my data on my Hackintosh partition with SuperDuper because I'll be reinstalling new copies of both OS's. I also had to reflash my motherboard to a newer version of the BIOS to recognize my i7 processor. To do this, I went to Gigabyte's website, searched for my board, and downloaded the latest version of my BIOS onto a flash drive. From there, I restarted my PC with the USB attached, went to the BIOS and pulled up the BIOS utility called QFlash. Using the menu, I first made a backup of my current BIOS settings in case something went wrong, and then selected a new BIOS off my USB. The installation took a couple of minutes, but after that, the PC restarted and was up to date. With the BIOS updated, I could then proceed and tearing apart my PC to get to the bare motherboard. Basically, I tore apart the motherboard compartment in my PC and placed the board on an anti static bag to make installation safer and easier. The processor upgrade was pretty simple. I took off the old CPU fan, opened the hinge that clamped down the old processor in place, and swapped the i3 with the i7 but making sure that the processor was in the correct orientation. After that I reclamped the processor down and placed in the new CPU fan since that had thermal paste pre-applied. The most nerve-wracking thing of this was making sure not to press too hard on the pins that held the fan in place or else damaging the MOBO. But once that was in place, I installed a new memory on my motherboard as well and put everything back together in the PC. I also installed a new Samsung SSD into a caddy in my PC. After everything was back together, before I installed a new copy of Windows on my new drive, I tried something different and wanted to see if any of my drives with their current OS's would boot with the new hardware. For the OS X drive, it didn't get past the Apple logo screen, which I wasn't surprised because I didn't think the OS would recognize my new processor. For my Windows drive, however, it did boot and recognize the processor off the bat. This was good info to learn, and now I know I don't have to perform a clean install on PCs with processor upgrades or downgrades. But after that experimentation, I removed my old Windows SSD and placed a new copy of the OS on my new Samsung drive. This was a typical Windows installation that I'm sure everyone has done before and the same steps used in my previous video were used again, so no need to reiterate this part. For the OS X installation, I'll be placing that in a separate video after this one. The main two reasons is the new OS, El Capitan, should be its own video, and the second reason is the method that I used to install it is different than what I've done in previous videos, and I make this video longer than it should be. So that video will be out in due time. Anyway, the machine's currently running Windows 10 Pro with all hardware detected, and the OS running normally after looking at my system info page and resource monitor. In terms of day-to-day -day use, the machine runs pretty good. I may look into a better CPU fan and better thermal paste because I notice temperatures get a little high for comfort, but luckily I don't tend to push my hardware and keep my PC in a cool environment. As I said earlier in the video, I want to run my virtual machines again on my system, and so far my PC takes advantage of the new hardware and can dedicate more resources to them like virtual cores and RAM. I also think the new SSD helped with the startup of programs and load times of games over my older SanDisk, 
but I'm sure any new SSD out of the box will have done that as well. Since I'm using new hardware, I ran some benchmark software to test the new SSD, memory, and processor. I started with Crystal Disk Mark to get a feel of what the Samsung SSD could do under stress. It pretty much did what Samsung claims it can do, with synchronous read and write speeds over 500 megabytes per second. Since the SSD is using a SAT3 connection, I know that it won't be able to go faster than this anyway. Next, I ran Cinebench to test the processor and got a CPU score of 769 CB. Compared to the score I got with the i3 in the previous video, the i7 is definitely better than the i3 and also helped increase the graphics card's OpenGL score. Lastly, I then ran a 32-bit Geekbench test with the results shown here. I mainly ran it to get a comparison of the new memory against the old set. To no surprise, the 16GB of RAM scored better on both the single and multi-core tests when compared to the scores in my previous video. In the end, I'm happy I made the leap towards the new hardware. I use this machine over 10 hours plus every day, whether it be for work or for fun, and I want to make sure I have the best experience possible. A few people will probably ask me how much this machine costs now, so after crunching the numbers, I found that I spent over $1,000 on this, not including the previous parts that were on here. It's no budget PC anymore, but hopefully it'll last me a good 3-4 to four years till I upgrade again. So, that'll do it for me, this is Steve signing off, and thanks for watching.